Hey there, Touch Designer Programmers, Matthew here. So we have spent a whole ton of time already talking about Python here in Touch Designer. And we're going to continue down that road just a little bit longer uh, to pull apart a few other things. So one of the things that we're going to do today is we're actually going to use an external text editor um, because we're going to start to write things that are a little bit more complicated and I find that having an external text editor is really helpful for that. The way that you set that up is from your preferences menu. Um, when this uh, lovely window pops up, over under DATS, you can actually set what your external text editor is going to be. Um, and so that's how we actually set that whole thing up here. And it looks like mine isn't picked yet, so we can go ahead and just search for Sublime um, because that's actually what I use. And if we don't see it right away, then we can navigate to wherever you keep your files, program files, Sublime Text 2, and we're just going to go ahead and uh, put in our path for that executable. Lovely. And now what that means is that if we have a text stat, for example, up and running here, we right click on this and we edit the contents of this, we're actually going to get uh, another window, right? So this is actually Sublime over here. This is my text editor. And I can write something in here and when I save it, it actually pops up right over here. We're going to use that a lot today because that's going to be a, a more useful way for us to start to work on uh, writing a lot of our Python because we've got syntax highlighting and a bunch of other features that make it just easier to do some of that editing inside of a uh, separate text editor. You're welcome to do it here in Touch Designer itself if you would like to do that, um, but I'm going to change it up a little bit. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? First, let's go ahead and clear out our network here. What we're going to focus on today is we're actually going to focus on looking at some logical operations. Now, there are lots of things that we might want to do with logic. And we're going to start just by looking at kind of the fundamental pieces of logic in Python, what that means, how we use some of those things, and then we're going to kind of slowly graduate to what that means here in Touch Designer. So stick with me. We're going to get there. It's going to feel a little bit long-winded to get started but it's, uh, it's just kind of laying the groundwork, the essential fundamentals so that we can really understand what it is that we're doing because that's going to be uh, extremely important for us. Okay, so let's look at one of the simplest kind of logical kind of situations we might run into, and that's if statements. So I'm going to go ahead and drop down a text dat here and do just what I said. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and split my view, and I'm going to open up my... Da -da -da text port and dats over here, because we're going to use um, our text port here a whole lot today, just so we can see how things print out. All right, so let's go ahead and edit the contents of this puppy. It's going to open up another window, window for us, and I'm going to try and make this text a little bit bigger so it's easier to see what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, right, is we're going to define our variables. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and put that in a comment here, just so we can see it. So again, as a reminder, every time we've got this little um, hashtag signed in front, right, that actually is a way of us indicating that we have a comment inside of our code, something that's not actually going to be run, not going to be evaluated. It's a way that we can leave notes for ourselves. So let's go up and go ahead and put in an integer. So I'm going to add something called my int one, and we're going to give that a value of five. Great. So we've got this integer called my int one and its value is five. And in fact, we could even print that out, right? We could print uh, my int one. Actually, let's, yeah, let's do that. My int one is, and we can all remember um, that we can use this handy trick, right? So percentage sign D means we're gonna pass something in and percentage sign my int one. We can save this. And if we just run this, right? This is a little bit of review here. Sure as shooting, there is our value. Okay, so let's think about a kind of easy logical test. And an easy logical test, verify our int, might be to uh, do some kind of operation in a circumstance. So what does that mean? Uh, in Python and a lot of logic, we might think of if and else. If you've done any work with Excel, then um, certainly you've used a lot of if statements. If this thing happens or if this is true, then do this. If that, do something else. And so that's what we're going to start with. So we're going to start with a simple if test. 
So if my integer is greater than or equal to the value 6, now we're going to tell it to do something, all right? So then it's going to print out this number is greater than 6. Great. All right, so we're going to save that, and let's see what happens when we try to run that. Aha, there we go. My values, um, oh, actually, so we printed the first thing, but we didn't print the second thing. Well, I, I, what happened? Well, the essential thing here for us to understand is that our, our if statement is really uh, only half completed. We don't have any circumstance for what happens if uh, our value isn't uh, is in fact less than or equal is less than six, right? We know what happens if it's greater than or equal to six, but not any other circumstances. So in this case, uh, we didn't have any errors, but we didn't see any other results because in fact our value isn't greater than or equal to six, it's less than that, so nothing happened. <laughs> so a way for us to think about what we might do is we might add an else statement in here, right? We might say, if it's greater than or equal to 6, do this thing. If it's not, do something else. I like to use else statements always inside of any if statement that I have, just so I know uh, kind of logically what's going on. So in this case, let's print out something different. So um, let's say this number is, is less than 6. And we should correct this, greater than or, or equal to, there we go. All right, now let's see what happens when we print this, when we want to run this. Okay, whew, this number is less than six. So that did pretty much what we thought it was going to do. Now, let's say that you wanted that first situation, right? Let's, I can imagine a circumstance where uh, I actually want this to be, I want to have both these things. I want to know what happens if it's this, but I also want to include else just to make sure that my code is nice and tidy, right? So I'm not creating some of a circumstance where something might break or might get confused. So let's go ahead and let's look at what we might do uh, in that circumstance. We're going to go ahead and edit the contents of this. I'm going to close my first one that I had open. And in this case, I'm just going to use uh, pass. And pass is going to make sure that I don't actually evaluate anything. It's kind of a null operation, right? It just means kind of go ahead and continue on as you do. And this is a way to make sure that we're, so we still have a kind of complete set of syntactical logic here. And if we run this, we'll see just uh, like before, right? Nothing changed. We didn't get anything else that printed out. Only our first my integer is uh, kind of came out here. And that's okay. And to change this, right, what we'd have to do is we'd have to actually change this value here. We've got to change the hard coding of this. Uh, and so that we can see, there we go, is greater than or equal to 6. Not bad. That makes pretty good sense so far. But just if or else, right, those, that kind of a, a limited set of logic really means that our, uh, what we can test for is pretty narrow. Right now, that's useful in a lot of ways. We might have lots of circumstances where we want to know if one thing or if not that thing. But we might want to test several things uh, depending on what it is that we're up to. So if that's the case, let's look at how we might um, include another statement in here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and borrow, borrow this first one. And let's use this one to get started here, right? So we'll go ahead and edit the contents of this one. Hopefully that's the right one. Let's just make sure. I'm going to close this and edit. Lovely. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and leave our integer at 7. Actually, let's change it back to 6. Uh, in fact, let's not be too hasty. We'll keep this first part and we'll keep this part. And we're just going to put something here in the middle, actually. That seems like a better idea. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to test to see if the number is greater than 6. So if it's greater than 6, let's print out this number is greater than 6. Okay. 
What about if it's equal to? If my integer is equal equal, and uh, a lot of programming languages, and Python included, two equal signs means exactly equal to six, then we're going to do, we're going to print out this number is six. And in all the other cases, we're going to print out this number is less than six. Now we'll notice that there's a special piece of syntax that I haven't talked about, and that's this colon, right? So the way that this is set up, kind of syntactically, is that our statement starts with if, and then our logical test. After our logical test, we have a colon that indicates that our test is concluded. Then indented one tab, or four spaces, we have the action, right, or what's supposed to happen in the event that, this, uh, that we pass this test. And then for our next statement, then we start back here at the beginning. Now, this shouldn't work exactly the way that we, we want. Um, let's save this. Let's see if it will evaluate. Oh, this number is six. Well, that's, uh, we can do it that way. That's a little bit sloppy of us, um, right? Like this would be really tempting to kind of write it this way. And while this will work sometimes, really the right thing for us to do is to use elif, which means else if this thing, right? It's a way of us, it's a way that we can add another if statement without having to worry about um, breaking any kind of rules. And elif is really useful for us in a lot of ways. Um, I like to use elifs quite a bit, actually, when we want to test multiple things. Uh, and your mileage may vary. You may find that you can do two if statements in a row, and that's going to work just fine for you. I would recommend probably uh, elif as a way to go. You should do some more reading about Python, find the, the, the right syntax for the circumstance that you're working in. Okay, that's my you know big soapbox, and I'm gonna get off of that so we can look at some other things. But let's go ahead and just save this and make sure we can run it. And sure enough, this number is six. Okay, let's go ahead and test another, another number. Like what if it's four? Ah, this number is less than six, good. Let's test a number larger than six, eight. Ah, this number is greater than six. All right, so our code works in all of the circumstances that we might uh, hope that it was going to work inside of. Whew. Okay. Now there's one other character, right? We've seen, uh, so far we've seen uh, greater than or equal to, which means we can do less than or equal to. We've seen equal to, so we know that works. Now there's one other that we haven't talked about yet that's worth pointing out here. And let's go ahead and edit this puppy. And that is not equal to. Well, how, how do we say, how do we say that? So let's go ahead and um, let's tidy this up a little bit. We're gonna take out our LF here. Here we can say not equal to with an exclamation point equal to. Right, so if my number is not equal to six, right, then we might say this number ain't six. Now we can see that I've got an, a problem here right away, so let's go ahead and use some double quotes instead of single quotes. There we go. So if my number is not equal to six, print this number ain't six, okay? In all the other cases, right, which would be it's equal to six, then we're gonna say this number, number is six. Now this is a kind of silly example for uh, where we might kind of run into this, right? This number ain't six, that's true. But it's important for us to have this kind of idea that we can use not just like we can use is or equal to or greater than or less than. That becomes a really useful kind of thing for us to hold on to and think about and kind of have access to, kind of in a thing to have in our back pocket. We're not limited. Yeah, let's do this next, huh? We're not limited to our ability just uh, to kind of stick with 
if statements like this, right? Let's kind of look at what we might do if we want to be like a little bit crazy. So let's kind of, let's uh, fix up a few, tidy up a few things here. We're going to go back to greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to six. Great, this number, and we'll fix our statement here, is greater than or equal e equal to six is less than six. Great, so far so good. But what if we want to do another test, right? Because in this case, our number might be greater than six, but uh, maybe we want to know if it's odd or even, right? And we could do that. We could run another if test in here. So let's do something like if my int uh, is divisible by two, and we haven't talked about uh, modulus, but that's what this percentage sign is. It's modulus two. Um, and if we divide a number by two, or if we, uh, hmm, Modulus is so complicated and uh, persnickety. What's a good way for us to think about modulus? It's kind of like a way that we can wrap around a number. Let's do like a really quick test here to see what that looks like, just so we can understand a little bit. So here, uh, let's say my int is four and I wanna print out uh, my int uh, modulus 2. Okay, so let's see what happens when we do this. All right, we get 0. Okay, well, what happens if it's 3? Ah, it's 1. Okay, what happens if it's 1? It's 1. Uh, okay, well, let's change this number so we can try again. Let's say the number is 10. Okay, so we get 1. What about 2? We get 2. Okay, let's go all the way up to five. Let's fast forward, we get five. Okay, six, we get six. Well, this, okay, Matt, I think I understand. Nine, we get nine. Now what's gonna happen here is at 10, we're gonna get zero because 10 divided by 10, well, 10 divided by 10 is one. Blah. It's, it's kind of a way that we can wrap back around to the beginning again. Right, and that's, uh, I wish I had a better way to explain that and I will work on a better uh, way to kind of pull that apart. But it's, um, it's really like about how uh, decimal points work and how we round and if you really wanted to get into the thick of it, we might do a little bit of like Googling to uh, figure out what is uh, modulus sometimes called modulo, right? So we could pull up the kind of Wikipedia on this, and it's really about the remainder after division, and it's how we're kind of uh, figuring out what that is, right? And I would encourage you to go look a little bit more closely at the math of this thing if you really want to pull it apart. Um, if we were to do another way of looking at this, might, we might like use a table that... Uh, and in our table, let's go ahead and let's edit this bad boy. And we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. And we can use an eval dat. And we're going to use an eval because it's going to allow us just to like run a single line on all of these puppies. And the expression we want is uh, me input cell, so input cell, my input cell, the value of that, and we're gonna modulus two, okay? So we can see that when we modulus two, we get one, zero, one, zero. Okay, if we modulus three, we should see one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero. If we did four, you can see what's gonna happen. You're beginning to see the pattern, right? So it's a way that we see how we wrap back around to the beginning. And important for us to know is that, right, zero is still a placeholder for us, right? It's still a number that's important. So zero kind of stands in for that five. So when I say modulus two, this is really a, a kind of tricky way that I can test to see if the value is even, right? Because if I divide by two 
and I get zero, then I happen to know that the value is even. And if I get one, then I know the value is odd. Uh, if that doesn't make a total sense, uh, wrestle with that like a little bit more, and I promise it'll kind of come around. Okay, anyway, so here we go. Whew. Small, uh, short little um, detour there. All right, so here's our next if test. If my integer is greater than or equal to 6, all right, this number is that. It's greater than or equal to 6. All right, let's do another test. If my integer modulus 2 is equal to 0, uh, let's print out, in that case, uh, hey there, cowboy, you got an even number. Excellent. And let's add an else in here also. Oops. Else, okay, if we don't have an even number, we're going to print out, you got an odd one, son. Because evidently we got prospectors doing their Python programming today. Okay. So the important thing to know here is we've actually now nested this other if else inside of this inside of this first statement, right? So first we see if it's greater than or equal to six. Then we test to see if it's even or odd. And then uh, if uh, we happen to not have an even number, or excuse me, if we happen to not have a number that's greater than or equal to six, then we say this number is less than six. <laughs> Let's see what happens. If we run that, okay. So this number is greater than or equal to six. Hey there, cowboy, you got an even number. Okay, so part of what we can see here is that we can nest these uh, statements inside of themselves. In fact, we can build like big complicated if trees um, be uh, careful, is all I would say. Don't get too crazy. If you're doing something super crazy, then just think about that. Uh, you might be making the world more complicated than it needs to be. Okay, not bad. That's pretty interesting. Uh, that's We've learned a lot there so far. But let's, uh, let's think about the circumstance where we want to pass two tests, right? So I want to know if a number is inside of a particular range, right? So uh, how might I do that? Well, let's go ahead. We're going to get rid of this second test here. And our number, let's say our number is 5. And I want to know if my number is bigger than 4 but less than 10. Okay. So how would I write that? I would write that by saying, if my int1 is greater than 6 and my int1 is less than 10, then you're going to print out this number is greater than, greater than 6, but less than 10. Let's make this window just a tiny bit larger for us. Okay, now... In our else, what are we going to print down here? Well, our else here might be, well, okay, well, this number is uh, less than 6 or greater than 10. That's what we know, right? That's what our, uh, that's what our um, script is going to test for. That's what it, the result is going to give us. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so this number is less than 6. 6 or greater than 10, okay, that's, that is what we want, right, that's the, the bottom one of those, so what happens, uh, right, Gray's number is greater than, is less than 6 or greater than 10, did we do that right, aha, I guess we didn't, let's see what we got here, this number is greater than 6, ah, right, because it's not, okay, what if the number is, Seven, right? That would be true for us here. So let's run that. Aha, this number is greater than six, but less than 10. Whew, okay, all right. So we can do two things here, right? That's, uh, that's pretty swanky for us to be able to, to think about. We can do and as a way of doing two operations together, right? We're testing for one condition and then testing for another condition. That's really helpful for us to be able to think about. 
Now, uh, those aren't the only circumstances that we might find ourselves in, right? There are plenty of other places where we might think about, well, how, how is this useful, helpful, what's going on here, right? Uh, we might have a, a circumstance where we want to know an or. Okay. So let's, let's give ourselves a new number. Let's say that our number, our integer here is maybe like negative five. Okay. Now, I want to know if my number is greater than four. Okay. Great. Or if my int is equal to uh, negative five. And these are arbitrary right now, but we might think about a situation where we want to know how we have something, uh, where we want to know exactly one of those things, then we could say this number is greater, greater than four, or equal to negative five. Okay, so if we don't pass the test, then this number is greater than four, and not negative five. That's what we would know. That's, that's what this thing is gonna tell us. And if we run this, oops, oh good. Oh right, we had an, uh, an added an extra if in there we don't need, or we don't need that puppy. Whew, thank goodness. Great, this number is greater than four or equal to negative five. We happen to know it's negative five, but if we didn't know, this would be a way uh, that we could do that. Now, so far, this is an awful lot of hard coding, right? This is like oh, the, our testing value and uh, our integer value are, they're like a bit ramshackle, right? Because what we've got to do is that if we want to change our tests in any way, we've got to change the things down in here. Let's clean this up, right? Let's just do greater than four and we can clean this up again. So if we pass this, this number is greater than four. And if we don't pass the test, this number is less than four. Right, we'll make this like really, really simple. So the challenge here, right, and this runs, this is still okay, is that if we ever want to change this value, right, we have to actually come in here and change this value itself. Now, we might instead assign a variable. So we might call, uh, we might make something called my uh, test int, my test integer, and we might call that four. And here, we could put in that variable instead, my test int. Right, which means we could change this print statement to pass in my test int. I need to remember our percent sign. And we could borrow this same idea here uh, and use it here at the bottom. Okay, we need to just tidy up our quote marks. So now this, this approach gets all of our, let's make sure that's right. Ay, 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 Matt. So that gets all of our hard coding out of our actual test itself, right? That actually puts all of our values in as variables. So now our variables are uh, in a kind of easy to access place. And so we can change them right up there at the top rather than worrying about changing them inside of our code itself. Now, hopefully, Right, hopefully what that begins to suggest is that we can start to think about how we can use references to access those variables instead of actually hard coding them. And that's actually where the real kind of magic comes in and the really fun stuff starts to happen. So what we're gonna do in part two is we're gonna dig into how do we put some references in here and what does that start to look like in our touch designer networks and how can we really start to take a uh, really good advantage of that. All right, so stick around for part two. We are gonna dig in a little bit deeper and do some more logical testing.